Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to this not a one, not a three, but a two tutorial. My name is Jesse Kester. I'm a filmmaker, a producer, a director who lives and works in Los Angeles, California. Today, we're going to be looking at how to do simple animated lower thirds that come on in like this. Oh, look at all that animation. They go on out like this. Whoa, there it goes. And we will build them using Keynote, Macintosh computer, and the ATEM Mini Pro. Now, the ATEM Mini Pro looks a little bit like this. The Macintosh computer looks a little bit like this. And the software that we'll be using looks like this. So what we're going to do is go over the hardware and how that's all set up together. Then we're going to take a look at the software. Software includes the ATEM software controller and Keynote, which is free if you're using a, an Apple computer. And then we are going to kind of tie it all together at the end. How does that sound? Good? Let's get into it. All right, first, let's look at the hardware configuration. And to do that, we're going to look at the ATEM. Now, the audio is coming in from the Zoom H6, which is barely in frame. Um, you can see that we are running in with a headphone cable and that the sound is on for that one. Sound is off for every other feed. Uh, left to right, let's go over these guys. We got HDMI 1 is our hero shot. You were just looking at it. Ooh, what a hero shot it is. Um, HDMI 2 is coming from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema. And HDMI 3 is the wide shot. Don't know that we're going to use this one, but we got it on backup if we need. And you'll see the white HDMI cable goes right into the computer. Continuing on, the HDMI out goes to the Ninja Assassin, which we are using for monitoring only, not recording. Um, next is USB-C. We've got that plugged into a hard drive, and we've got the record on. Finally, we've got the Ethernet plugged into the computer, and that is how we are controlling the ATEM. Now you are going to need to download ATEM software controller and have your ATEM plugged into the software to access this higher functionality, all the chroma keying, and we'll be doing some picture in picture, I imagine, if, you know, if, if the spirit compels. So that's the hardware configuration. Let's get into software. Here we are in the software. We're going to go to full screen on this so that there are no distractions. And basically what we're looking at is the up upstream key tab um, and we're going to be doing chroma so what you wanted to find first is uh, which camera will be chroma keyed we're going with camera four because that's the one where we have our animated lower third titles and next step is defining the chroma sample so how you do this it's pretty simple it's a fairly intuitive uh, but not completely intuitive interface so what you've got is this little square box here, and this represents your full screen. So as you move this box around, you'll notice that the preview starts to change. And what it's doing is averaging together all the pixels that are inside that box. So I'm going to move it around and try to find that red box up there for cam four. Oh, oh, no. Anyway, you get the idea. So right now it's on that green right around here. If we go too far left, it'll turn gray. If we go too far right, it'll turn gray again. Now we want that green. If you're doing a real green screen with an actual screen that is green with a camera pointed at it, you want to be um, lighting it as evenly as humanly possible. We've got the deck stacked in our favor here because we're building our green digitally in a piece of software. So this green is identical to that green is identical to that green over there. You can't lose. It's really quite miraculous. So now that we've got that set up, let's go over to um, Keynote and build our environment. So I've started with a blank workspace here. Simple as can be, you go to a shape, pick your square shape, and stretch it out to the size of the entire canvas. Now, if your graphics that you want to remain on screen, if you're using a green palette for that, you can use any color here. You can use blue, you can use magenta, whatever you want, you can use it here. Um, but we're gonna use, we're gonna go simple, we're just gonna go with green. Something I like to do at this point is right click and lock that to the background since we're not gonna be moving that at all once we get started. Um, we don't we, we should lock it down we're going to be moving all the other elements the the lower thirds the text the little graphic -y, animation -y things those we're going to be working with and we don't want to accidentally animate the background let's do a quick test we're going to go back to our hero cam 
And let's take a look if that green screen is working. We're going to turn it on and it looks like it's working perfectly. You see how um, I'm framed by the Keynote software? That's because if you look at Keynote, everything that is in that, uh, that canvas is currently green. And that's why I'm green, except for the mouse. Ah, let's click on me. Anyway, back to our software. Next thing you're going to want to do is create another shape. Now, you don't have to build these shapes in um, Keynote. If you want to build them in Photoshop and do more detail work, you certainly can. We're just doing the quick and dirty version for this one because you know I love it quick and you know I love it dirty. You can almost hear Michael Scott echoing in your ears, can't you? All right. Let's spice this up a little bit with a gradient. And here comes the text. Now, some of you uh, dorks and nor nerdlingers might settle for Helvetica New. I'm not that dork. I'm not that nerdlinger. I'm an Avenir Next guy, and that's just how it is on this program. Uh, so we're going to go Avenir next. We're going to blow it up a little bit. I do like that font quite a, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Uh, let's give ourselves a little bit more space to work with our graphics. But we already have our basic lower third. Let's, uh, let's test it out. Wow, what a lower third. Now make sure you play as you're testing it out. That's way too big, wouldn't you say? So what we're going to do is shrink that down and try it again. It's looking better, looking better. What if I had good posture? That would be perfect. That's a wonderful little lower third. All right. Next step is to animate it. Let's take a look at how simple that is. You go over to this animation tab, build in, add an effect. Now here's where there's one thing you have to be careful of here. Just one little thing. Hey, why are we still in this version? We do not need me on screen right now. There we go. Um, one thing to be aware of is you don't want to use any of these transitions that include a fade up or any effects with transparency. Like if you look at this lens flare, you'll see that there are incredible transparencies throughout and this is what it'll look like if you use something like that. The green is kinda sorta a little bit wonky. So we're gonna go with something a little simpler. Let's try this move in effect. That seems to be working pretty well. Let's use that. All right, now enough is never enough. Good enough is not good enough in this house. We're going to add a symbol. Now, last time I went with an aperture symbol because I wanted it to look like I was a filmy, makey guy. But now we're going to go with a heart because I'm... Look, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Make it white so we can see it. No, nobody needs a, a dark, evil heart. We want loving, sunshiny hearts, don't we? To that end, let's just go ahead and make it orange. Make it a really lovely, sunshiny heart. All right, that's looking good to me. Um, but we want to add a bit of animation to it. So we're going to go back to animate and we're going to, we're going to go to add an effect and we're going to go a little juicier on this one. We're going to do bouncy. Last one came out bouncing in is very cute, very adorable. Now there's one problem with this. It doesn't look like a problem quite yet, but I'm going to show you how it is a bit of a problem. As we bring it in there, I had to tap once to bring in the, uh, the lower third. Where is our bouncy little heart? It's coming in a little late, but um, none the worse for wear. What we want is for that little heart to bounce in right after the lower third comes in. So we're going to go to build order and drag and drop that up. Right now it says after build one. We can have it with or after. We're going to leave it at after. Let's take another look at that and see if it works any better. Here it comes. Zoom. And there it is. On one click it came in perfectly. Next is to get rid of it. Getting rid of it is quite easy. We're just going to select. Why am I still up? I keep forgetting to. Hi. Bye. I keep forgetting to get rid of myself. Um, we want these both to leave at the same time. So we're going to go to the build out tab, add an effect, and we're going to go with move out. Look at them go. Now, if you wanted to make it a little tighter, because by the time you're building out, you don't want to be distracting from the actual interviewee, or in this case, oneself. So we're going to drag and drop that up there. And instead of after, we're going to do it with. And let's take a look at how that goes. Couldn't be better. Perfect. I love it a billion percent. 
All right. Let's take a look at how that looks. We're going to go back to camera one, turn on the green screen, and... Hey, it's Jesse Kester, the explainer guy who loves you. And get out of here, lower third. Nobody wanted you in the first place. All right, so that's looking good. That's how you build it over in Keynote. And again, if you want to use... Um, uh, something something a little more robust, something that you built in Photoshop with a bit more TLC, I would recommend it. Uh, but this is just to introduce you to the upstream keying feature features on the ATEM Mini Pro. Let's get into that software for a minute and figure out how that works. So now, here we are in the software. We've got our upstream chroma key set for camera four. And what you can do is click on air and key and that should work you can't see it because we're stuck in here um over here let's take a look if that is working and so what i did was i you know what let me get out of here and we're going to take a look at the atem as we do this so what we're going to do is switch back over to keynote and load up that big old green screen so i'm going to turn keying on on the atem and when i do that nothing should happen it shouldn't look any different because if you look over on feed four, the entire screen is green. So if we key out an entirely green screen, nothing will be seen as, as the old poem goes. Uh, let's run that animation and you should be able to see it up here on the screen. Let me bring down that brightness a bit. It seems to be overloading. Um, you should be able to see it on the screen up here as it happens on your main screen down there. Yep, there it goes. There's that heart bouncing on in, and now it's going to disappear. All right, so that is a quick, simple, down and dirty overview of upstreaming uh, chroma key in uh, in the ATEM software controller using the ATEM Mini Pro and a MacBook Pro as your chroma key titles, lower thirds source. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, please, I encourage you to uh, look down below at this, at this thing called the comments section where you can type in your questions and I will do everything in my intellectual and physical capacity to answer those questions if I don't know how to answer it. Guess who's gonna know that I don't know immediately after I don't know. It's gonna be you and now you know. Other than that, of course, uh, comments, subscriptions, notifications are all valid ways to show affection in this modern digital age. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back at you again soon with another tutorial on whatever it is. Bye.